Taking a look at the latest update of the 7 day graphical tropical weather outlook, we are seeing that this tropical wave right here now has a higher possibility of developing into a tropical cyclone before the chance was low but now the National Hurricane Center has risen its forecast to a moderate chance where we do see that we have a medium 40% chance within the next 7 days, a 0% chance within the next 40 hours because right now the area of moisture just isn't very organized, it's very spread out and it needs a little bit more convection before we can say the pressure will lower enough for the wind speed to increase but now we're seeing a medium chance that this tropical wave develops over the next 7 days and this could come close to some of the Caribbean islands if this were to take the uh, track further southward and this could of course become a future concern for Bermuda and we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to the exact trajectory because a couple of these Caribbean islands as well as the island of Bermuda could be impacted. Here's the current look at the water vapor imagery over the northern Atlantic and we do see this is a tropical wave we're watching right here and we see that the Thunder showers are very isolated, the convective activity isn't very consolidated or very structured to where we're seeing a well-organized area where there's a bunch of convective activity. We're going to need to see a little bit more of that activity before we can say that this will have a good chance of developing into a tropical cyclone for at least near future. It seems like there isn't enough of that um, lift that going on around this tropical wave. We do have a, a pocket of dry air just to the north of it which could be an inhibiting factor and is expected to be an inhibiting factor as this continues ahead further westward where there's an upper there should be a, a ridge that's gonna be close in proximity to a low pressure zone located in the United States that should bring a strong northerly flow of dry air on the, the western side of this tropical wave so that definitely could be a major inhibiting factor when it comes to this tropical wave strengthening but as of right now it doesn't seem like at least in the near future within the next 48 hours it'll have a chance of developing but certainly the chance will rise as a convective activity is expected to increase Here's what the latest run of the GFS model is stating at this time when it comes to the amount of relative humidity over the northern Atlantic. We do see this our tropical wave right here and if we were to continue to move forward we see that eventually the moisture will surround the center of circulation a little bit more. We're going to see more convective activity overall and that should help strengthen this storm as it continues to head further westward. But of course we do see the dry air quickly increases as it moves northward. Now the good news is, is that the GFS model wants to steer this northward primarily out to sea and I'll say that's certainly the most likely scenario at this time as it seems like there's going to be just enough of weakness in ridging and the trough is going to dig deep um, just south enough to where it could pull this storm out to sea and not really be at least at least for the foreseeable future not uh, imminent um, direct threat to land which is certainly good news. We do have National Hurricane Center um, bringing the cone of uncertainty a little bit further um, westward closer to the Lesser Antilles so in the Lesser Antilles I wouldn't rule out the possibility that maybe you could receive indirect impacts but when it comes to direct impacts it's highly unlikely at this time and I'll say that most likely this will bring little to no impacts to the Lesser Antilles and Windward Islands which is certainly good news there's just too much of weakness in ridging um, for this storm to be able to move further southward however on the tail um, um, towards the back side of this storm there could be an influx of rain showers right around um, Wednesday of next week so you might want to keep that in mind but outside of that really not much when it comes to impacts and then moving forward with the storm's future we see the dry air definitely takes a toll where on the western side of this storm system we see that the dry air quickly increases this is due to the fact that there's a ridge located right here a small one and there's a small pressure gradient between this low that's bringing just enough of a strong northerly wind um wind flow to where all this dry air that was displaced towards the northern atlantic will move towards the western side of this storm and that's gonna definitely uh, um limit this storm's possibility of developing into a tropical cyclone which is still the reason why the national hurricane center isn't entirely confident that it's gonna develop right now we're around a medium chance but we still do see 
despite the dry air the gfs model wants to shrink this into a tropical storm and i'll say that uh, it'll definitely need some barrel clinic instability to really help strengthen this storm as it continues to head further northward as you could probably tell it has a very mid lad to low pressure system look where we have the dry air on the western side filtering in on the south western quadrant of this i mean southeastern quadrant of this storm and then all the moisture is located just to the east of that very reminiscent of a uh, typical mid lad to low we'd see so i'll say it'll definitely need some instability to help this storm and the upper level winds will move at the same direction at this point so of course the wind speed along the eastern side will certainly increase because the surface level winds along the eastern side of this low as well as the upper level winds will move in the same direction so that's where the strongest of the winds will be but this should move out to sea maybe strengthening quite a bit by the time this approaches the northern latitudes but by that point it's going to be well to north not really an imminent threat to land so i wouldn't worry too much maybe in um the extreme eastern portions of canada maybe um could we see the storm move a little bit further westward that's a possibility we're gonna need to see this ridge become a little bit stronger but when it comes to at least the near future there's no real threat to land with this and i think that's the most likely scenario which is good news i don't expect it to take a huge um different track where it impacts the caribbean islands maybe this could impact bermuda but it seems like the both of the two most reliable computer models are leaning towards bringing this just to east of cuba which would certainly be the best case scenario but maybe watch out for a higher surf right around the bermuda area in terms of tropical waves beyond um, this one we're seeing, which has the um, at least the immediate potential of developing into a tropical storm, we do see that there's going to be an influx of moisture moving into the main development region. However, it seems like the dry air will eventually take hold of the main development region as we approach August, which would certainly be good news because, of course, August is when the hurricane season really starts um ramping up so that would definitely um that so that could definitely at least early on limit tropical cycle development with this much dry air and we don't really see it change much so hopefully this remains um but still keep in mind this is a long hurricane season so just because the beginning of august might be rather dry at least in the main development region when it comes to tropical cyclones does not mean that'll hold up all hurricane season so make sure to stay tuned for more updates so here's a look at the GFS model's forecast when it comes to the upper level winds of the, uh, over this tropical wave. And we do see that initially the upper level winds won't be that strong, so it might have a chance to be able to organize itself. However, we do see that at least surrounding the storm, the wind shear does become moderate to strong. However, the low pressure system would be located in just a small area where the wind shear will remain just light enough to where it could still organize itself and create a close center of circulation despite the fact that there's a decent amount of dry air just so um that's expected just so west of this storm system and that there's stronger wind shear just to be outside in fact the upper the strong upper level winds couldn't um could um support this storm when it comes to uh, intensifying because the stronger the upper level winds the more outflow there would be um over this storm and pretty much what outflow is is letting the storm breathe of course um, when there's a lot of convection and a lot of lift in a tropical cyclone a lot of air moves up into the upper levels of the atmosphere and sometimes if there's too much air in the upper levels then that means that the air in the lower levels won't be able to rise and that slows down tropical cyclone activity when there's too, when the air pressure is too high in the upper levels so when there's a stronger outflow that pushes a lot of that air away from the upper levels and that allows more of the surface um, level air which is very warm and moist to rise up and provide the storm um a tropical cyclone from um with more latent heat to continue to intensify and so i do believe that this outflow will somewhat help this storm despite the stronger upper level winds associated with it and then we do see the upper level winds will quickly increase by the time this approaches the extreme northern latitudes of the northern Atlantic. So that's gonna be something we're gonna need to pay close attention to. I'll say that it's around, like the National Hurricane Center is saying, it's around a medium chance this will develop, but the good news is that it's unlikely to impact land. 
So here's a look at a 500 millibar geopotential height anomaly over the North Atlantic to really show you guys what are the what's what are going to be the main steering flows um, with this storm system as it continues ahead further westward. Um, in case you're curious, at um, could this potentially move towards the west and bring impacts to the bigger Caribbean islands? However, I'll say that it's un very unlikely at this time. We have a big weakness in ridging, so it's just promoting this storm to try and to move further northward and we have a big ridge located right over the Caribbean islands that would prevent this storm from being able to move further westward so we see this move northward where it has an open area to move where all the troughing is so that would definitely avoid that would definitely make the storm system avoid the Caribbean islands and moving towards um, the Bermuda area we do see that the troughing definitely um, increases and that allows the storm to move out to sea and not be being much of a threat to land and the European model is also forecasting much of the same things which is the reason why if this does develop it will likely develop into a weak tropical storm and not impact anyone directly so that's certainly good news but make sure to still stay tuned for further the tropical side um, hurricane season updates because the hurricane season as you know could change very quickly Take a look at the European model forecast. We see that it's the forecast is very similar to what the GFS model is stating. We do see that there's a decent amount of moisture surrounding the storm, but the European model expects even more dry air. So it's um, the European model is less lenient on developing this into a tropical cyclone as the dry air just becomes too much for this to handle but regardless whether this develops or not it sh um we likely won't experience any impacts which is certainly good news but beyond that point we see that the dry air takes hold of the main development region in the european model scenario as well so i'll say at least for the near future things should may be rather quiet over the northern atlantic Here's a look at the global tropics hazards outlook to really show you guys where exactly um, um, we could see tropical cyclone development. And outside of this small area where, of course, tropical storm Emily is possible, we do see that outside of that, there isn't really much to expect when it comes to tropical cyclone development or um, much uh, of any convection at all. It's expected to be drier than average right over the Southern Caribbean. And we see the same thing for um, um, for the week um, ending August 15th, where we do see plenty of dry air um, over the Caribbean islands. So at least for the near future, it's um, it seems like a lot of indications are pointing towards um, tropical cyclone activity um, being kept at a minimum, which is certainly good news. Here are what the GFS ensemble members are forecasting when it comes to potential tropical storm Emily. And we do see that all of them unanimously want to take this out to sea and not one of them really comes close to Bermuda to be much of a threat, um, which is certainly good news. Same goes for the European model as well. All the ensemble members want, are wanting to take this storm system out the sea and not impacting anyone. So here's my forecasts overall for the Northern Atlantic over the next several days. So I'll say there's a medium chance, just like what the National Hurricane Center is stating when it comes to the development of Tropical Storm Emily. We're just going to need to wait and see if a lot of dry air will um, inhibit this storm's potential. The GFS model is leaning towards this storm having a little bit more moisture to work with, which is why I want to develop it into a tropical storm, while the European model, not so much. But regardless, it shouldn't impact any land directly. And in terms of any other tropical cyclones in the more long-term future, it seems like it's going to be drier than average as well, but I'll keep us updated if there's any changes with that forecast. But that's it for now, guys, and I thank you guys for watching.